you. So, you know, PJ Moore was just here talking about his unconventional journey with faith. And today we wanted to expand the conversation about unconventional faith. And we're meeting guests who are bringing people together through faith in very different ways. Our next guest, Adar Mahamud, is a 32-year-old podcast host from Toronto who's making big headlines. Her award-winning podcast, The Digital Sisterhood, where she shares personal and empowering stories of Muslim women, has over 15 million streams. She also does retreats. She's even created her own card game for Muslim singles. And 38-year-old Daniel Bortz, known as the Millennial Rabbi, is getting a lot of attention on social media for his creative ways to modernize Jewish traditions. His events have included sound baths, sushi Shabbat dinners, and even a Shabbat tent at Coachella. They recently took us inside their events. Take a look. Hi, Tam fam, it's Adar. I'm doing a live event with a group of NYU students. Come tag along. I always kind of long for sisterhood. The aim for the Digital Sisterhood podcast and platform is to amplify the voices of Muslim women everywhere. With the podcast we've met digitally, having that real life experience it is just like no other. You generally feel sisterhood manifesting before you. Hey TamFam, this is Daniel Bortz, the Millennial Rabbi, and I have the great privilege of leading a community of young Jewish professionals here in downtown New York City. Welcome! Instead of expecting them to come to synagogue, we like to find beautiful venues to bring the beauty of our heritage and ritual to this generation in a relatable and fun way, to provide a loving place of connection and a real sense of belonging. <clears throat> Adar and Rabbi Daniel to our TAMFAM. So I am not normally nervous. I've been doing this for a long time. We're in our sixth season. This is a big moment for us because when I first pitched this show, I said I would talk about faith, not to convert, but to be authentic to who I am. I was told we couldn't do that. Mm. And now I have an image that I don't think I've seen on daytime TV in a very long time. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you joining us and taking us in. Adar, BuzzFeed News says your show, your podcast, provides a space where religion, faith, and community can mix with discussion about mental health, love, and the internet. Uh, one of your fans commented, the digital sisterhood has been the Muslim representation that younger me so desperately craved. Mm -hmm. By the millions, you're bringing people in. What do you think about, what do you think it is at this time that you're giving? I think authenticity. I think realness, I think um, approaching faith from a very honest way. Um, I'm, I've never really taken to preaching mm -hmm. very well as a millennial. I can only imagine what it's like for Gen Z's. And so for me, I think what people are feeling is, wow, this sounds like me. These voices sound like me, these stories sound like me, and they're just raw and real. They're raw think, and real. Yeah. And, and it's interesting because here you're very different situations on yeah. faith, but Rabbi, you found that same need to, to to find a way to reach people in a different way. Shabbat, you said you and your friends, it, you weren't relating to it. And so you decided to really shake up how that happens and, and, and to bring in younger people. You said you wanted something relatable for your generation. And you've done that. Hundreds of people attend your tradition, attend your Shabbat. Um, what do you think they're seeking when they go in? So in like 2018, I had kind of an epiphany. I was in Southern California and uh, I was praying on a Friday afternoon in my backyard, which is strange for a rabbi to do because you're supposed to be in synagogue. Yeah. And for me, I was connected more through nature and through music and through other methods. And um, I just, uh, I, 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 I realized that if it's for me and I know all the different meanings and everything behind the prayers and all my friends and contemporaries who don't know the meanings of stuff for mm -hmm. sure need something that meets them where they're at. And uh, I kind of just hit me that I need to start offering um, experiences for, for them. And like a week or two later, I did like a sound bath in my backyard, similar to I know, I, so I've done a sound bath before. I didn't know it was steeped in for some people in this, in this cleansing moment, but I love that li they're lining up, right? And that's yeah. always a sign, right? You're, you're hitting a nerve when folks are lining up. Yeah. When you first saw that, what did you think? I, I, I think, you know you're onto something when you're curing something that you yourself need. And I knew that I, I, I wasn't connecting through all the traditional methods. And I think everyone 
You know, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, a, a rabbi I follow, he said that um, one will only be happy if you nourish the soul as much as you nourish the body. Mm. And uh, I feel like a lot of people are searching for that soul food that, that we won't necessarily get through money or through um, power or, or anything that we're running after in this life. We need, it was a different, the, the soul speaks in a different language. Yeah. And we have to feed that. Adar, you have, we have a photo of a, an event you recently did, your live podcast, because she does her podcast live. You were in London. It sold out in three minutes? Yeah. <laughs> three minutes. That's incredible. <laughs> you have, you do retreats. Mm -hmm. um, you've gone around the world, Seattle, Spain, Morocco, Australia. Yep. Um, and you say it's the authenticity. I love this game. Tell us why you created this game. Well, it actually came after an experience I had during the pandemic. Um, I was on an app called Clubhouse. And uh, women were sharing their experiences. I mean, they're really horrific experiences with courting. And I just felt like, wow, like a lot of these things could have been dodged simply by just having a good conversation and assessing a vibe. I know so a if lot you're of on a date, you take out the cards yeah. and read? Courting, well, yeah. rather. So yeah. it, it, it's meant to be a game. Yeah. Uh, um, to be fun. To fun, but yeah. it's really intentional as well. Well, because the questions are intentional. This one I picked up. When you think about the word family, what comes to your mind first? Yeah. That's a universal question, no Absolutely. matter your fate. Yeah. This one is good. When it's 3 a.m. and you can't sleep, what are you thinking about? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking a lot. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> we all went like, ah. Oh. Yeah. And again, I, I love that because that can speak to anyone and that, uh, that allows you into Absolutely. a deeper conversation. Uh, what's the response that's touched you the most? On this um, I like not just recently I, I've had women obviously tell me like they played this game they've gotten married they've connected it, the connection part was really easy it broke the ice mm -hmm. but I think my favorite is I met a sister who isn't a Muslim mm -hmm. who found the benefit of the game mm. and that's why I'm really proud of it because it is very universal it is universal right? um, if you value family connection community int intimacy all these things are important to all of us and so I appreciate that she benefited. I love from the that. Game I love that yeah. too. Um, Rabbi, you know, a part of this show was inspired by an article, I believe it was in the New York Times, that said there was, um, they were seeing fewer men seek faith and that women were retreating from faith. Uh, there was a Pew Research poll that said Gen Z is the nation's least religious generation, but about a third having no religion at all. Millennials are around the same. I'm intrigued because your events, typically the age 24 to 36, are drawn to you. So at a yeah. time where the studies say that that's the opposite, both of you are bringing in those young people. Three-fourths of millennials don't identify with religion, and the same number do identify as somewhat or very spiritual. Mm -hmm. So clearly there's a desire to connect, but we're not giving it in the language that, that, our, peop that our generation needs. And um, honestly, with my community, it's actually a lot of women that are connected to it because I feel like more spiritually in tuned. I'm actually working harder now to get um, the men to, get to, to, to come and be more connected to it. Um, but I think that um, there's a thirst that if it's met in, if you're, you know, I, I went to a party college in California, I was having a good life and I left it to go to Jerusalem and dedicate myself to learning, not because of any incentives, but right. it brought me inner peace and joy and clarity of purpose. And if I, you know, when I share, I'm sharing that, if you can give it over in a relatable uh, language, I think everyone's looking for how it's gonna benefit their lives and give them purpose as well, so I, I think it's there. I agree. Well, I, it's an honor to have you both on, and I am celebrating the success that you've had in both of your journeys and the people that you've brought in, because ultimately, that's the relatable part of this. It's how you treat other people and mm -hmm. thus the world.